After every project, you might have a couple scraps left over. They can build up rather quickly. Well, let's see what we can do with them. Crazy quilting can be difficult to work with your first time, especially when you're doing it with clothes. I would suggest taking a simple pattern such as either a pleated skirt or maybe even a circular skirt for your first time. However, once you get the technique down, you can do this technique with almost anything. Purses, bags, shirts, dresses. However, like I said, first time you're going to want to stay with something simple. The first step of this project is to make your base layer. From here we will be adding all the patches on. You'll want to start off with a breathable material such as a light cotton. Once this is done, it's time to stitch on the patches. To add the first patch to this project, you're just going to tack it down using a regular stitch. All the raw edges will be covered up by future patches, so don't worry about turning the edges or fraying in the future. Once you have your first patch stitched down, it's time to move on to the next. The best way to do this project is to go in with a game plan. However, if you don't feel like planning, that's okay. This is a project that can be easily modified as you go along. To attach the second patch, go into your scrap pile and find something that matches the first patch. Line it up so it covers up some of the raw edges. Pin it into place and then stitch it down. You're going to want a very small seam allowance for this. Don't worry about fraying because once again it will be covered up by the patch itself. This will stop any fraying from affecting the clothing in the future. Now it's time to remove the pins. Once removed you're going to want to press it into place and see if you like the patch. If not, remove it with a seam ripper right now. It'll be too late in the future. Remove any excess off the seam allowance. This will give you patches to work with in the future just in case you run out. Now it's time to go back to the scrap pile, find something else that you like and goes with both the patches, pin it in place, and stitch it down. You'll want to repeat this process over and over again until the skirt is covered. If there's a particular patch you'd like to add emphasis to, why not put it on top of everything else? While it's down, iron all the raw edges towards the wrong side of the patch. Then press them in place. Once everything is pressed down, find the place that you want to place it on the skirt. Then stitch it into that spot, using your regular stitch right along the edges. This is what's known as a classic patch. Now it's time to cover the whole skirt using these two methods of patches until you have something that looks like this. Congratulations, you have finally finished the crazy quilt process. This is basically all there is to crazy quilting. Once the crazy quilting is done, it's just editing and finishing up your project as you normally would. Notice how the layers of patches go all the way to the edge. However, once they go beyond the base layer, they're cut off, giving you the same exact shape as the base layer that you cut out earlier. This is what I've always called piece editing, making sure your piece actually looks like the pattern piece. Once this is done, I normally like to add a full lining to it. As you can see, I'm cutting out here. However, I would suggest advising your pattern to see what your pattern suggests you to do at each stage. At this point, your crazy quilting piece is no different than any other fabric you'd have with the same amount of drape. Remember, your pattern knows what it's doing. And, if you disagree with it or don't believe it's the best source, it's always a good thing to try to think outside the box. As a sewer, this is a very important part of the process. Never let your creativity be stopped by a pattern. And never let creativity be stopped by the choices of fabric you have. I hope you enjoyed this video and use crazy quilting in your next project. Or, maybe never use it. I hope you just enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you like it, or maybe not. And remember, you can always make new interesting pieces using whatever materials you feel like using. There's no rules. You're making it, remember?